this girl? Yeah, I loved her. What'd she do? <sighs> she took a giant shit on my face. Literally. Literally? Not literally. It's disgusting. Jesus. What's the matter with you? Point is, I messed up. I am. I, you know, on the one hand, I want to forget her. On the other hand, I know that she's the only person in the entire universe that will make me happy. Mm -hmm. You ever do this? You think back on all the times you had with someone, and you should replay it in your head over and over again, and you look for those first signs of trouble. There's two options, really. Either she's an evil, emotionless, miserable human being, or she's a robot. Small wonder, you know, Vicky. I'll explain a lot, actually. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. She never cheated on you. No, never. Did she ever take advantage of you in any way? No. Yeah. And she told you up front that she didn't want a boyfriend. Yeah. Hello, folks, and happy Valentine's Day, uh, whether you're single or, or uh, with someone from the Cinebeef podcast. Um, I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill, and with me tonight is Iris. Hello, hello. How y'all doing? Happy Valentine's. Fine, fine. How you doing, girl? I am doing good. Just uh, finished dinner. I got a full belly, so hopefully I'm not going to fall asleep on y'all. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, oh, no, we're no, no. totally the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally want to shoot the shit about this yeah. damn movie. Yeah, we all yeah. just ate, so that's that's a that's a reality. And so is these movies. Woo-wee, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne's here. How you doing, girl? I am doing well. I also just finished dinner and am ready to fall the hell asleep, but I will stay awake for you guys and happy Valentine's Day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're here tonight to, uh, to do a Valentine's show for you. And in a way, it's it's kind of, these are kind of hate watches though, if you think about them. So uh, get ready for that, y'all. But um, we'll start the, the, the show the same way we always start the show. And I'll ask Iris, what's she been watching lately? Well... I have been on a uh, kind of like a true crime thing here lately, and I just finished a uh, crime scene vanishing at the Cecil Hotel. And I was, you know, I've always been very, very interested in the uh, Elisa Lamb disappearance there. You know, how they found her in the water tank, all that rot. Ha ha. That's funny. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm laughing, but I'm respecting, I'm respecting you with the mute, okay, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh i've been you know, trying to finish off the night stalker uh series and then to totally flip it i have to go to my creature features because um we're going to be doing food of the gods next on uh bbmbc and then i just watch the relic because you know why the fuck not so that's one of my favorite books i love that book oh and I man love if you can can you stand listening to somebody read a book? Yes. Okay. So are you on Audible? Yeah. Okay. Shoot me your 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 stats. Uh, DM me your stats, and then I will let you borrow my my store my my read the book of the relic. Incredible. Oh, oh wow! It is really oh, really cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very very well done. But yeah, besides that, that's pretty much it. Um. Uh, so yeah, that's me. Cool. Suzanne. Well, uh, I have to get into the disappearance at the Cecil Hotel. Just got a few other things. And I want to be completely clear headed when I watch it. I don't want to have like, I don't want to be distracted. It's kind of what I did with the Night Stalker one. I just got, I have to make sure that my, I'm, I'm not all over the map, but I have, I am still in, you know, deep into cop shows. I am I am just about to start season four of NYPD Blue. I really wasn't sure after the first season and David Caruso leaving, I kind of stopped watching it. But I really got to hand it to Jimmy Smith. He just filled that gap with, with no problems whatsoever. I it was like David Who? And I okay, I'm I'm not a huge reality show fan. I like a good competition show and I could, I had no attention span the other day. So I ended up watching over the span of two days, all of this thing called next in fashion, which was kind of fascinating. 
I don't really think about clothes or style in that way, but these people were so creative and unique. It was really fascinating. And of course, these two movies, so that's going to be fucking fun. And we watched um, with the NFW this movie that I had never seen before called Trapped Alive. I like to think to myself, yeah, I need to go watch that by myself. And then, you know, I really just don't need to. There are parts of it that are cool, but it was just one of those, you know, straight to video, late 80s movies where, you know, you've got a little good gore and a pretty weak storyline and the actors are not good enough to carry it. I don't know. It was it was interesting enough, you know, with a group of people where you're, you know, kind of talking about a little bit. And I just I, it's not one I can actually recommend to anybody, but that's pretty much about all I've been watching. Cool. I've been watching a bunch of stuff, actually. Uh, a couple of things I didn't mention the last time around. I rewatched Blank Check, and I'll never do it on this show, probably, because I'm a 90s kid. And for some reason, Dizzy left the, the 90s excess over with. If you haven't seen this film, and you know, you're my age, you probably have. It's about a kid who never really gets a blank check from a mobster. And he, he it's a blank check, so he, he makes a million dollars for this blank check. But there's a a spin to where the mobster is getting money from this bank. So they give the kid the money and he buys all this shit. Okay. But the live blank check tells us is that you can buy all that shit with a million dollars, but you can't. So this is like, you know what, dude, this is, um, not only that, but it's really uncomfortable watching that kid flirt with a grown woman and her like responding to it. It's like, yeah, that's kind of gross. But, um, fun parts about Miguel Ferrer is one of the bad guys in the movie. Uh, the late Miguel Ferrer. And he plays like this wonderful asshole, like like he mostly does. And um, high point of the movie that and Rick Dukeman, who is no longer with us either. These fucking dead people, I can't stand dead people. I love it makes me sad, you know. Um, other than new shit, I watched uh, Psycho Gorman, which is uh, the new Astron Six type movie, in which kids find a uh, some kind of glowing amulet in the ground. And are able to control like this hulking beast that, that just destroys everything, and um, it's it's a it's a movie that people are in love with. I'm not in love with it like they are. It's fun, but it's really dumb at the same time, and you want to slap the children by the time the movie's over with. <clears throat> so that's um, that's Psycho Gorman. Um, I watched one that uh, Pat will probably watch in uh, in spite of Suzanne one day called Triassic <laughs> Hunt. This is the movie um, that stars Michael Pere, kind of, and stars Linnea Quigley, kind of. It's, it's an asylum picture. I didn't know that going in, but I said, okay, I, I'll watch this. In which they rip off Jurassic Park and, and elements of aliens, and they put two, like, like raptor slash Tyrannosaurus Rex dinosaurs inside, like, a high-rise, and let it, like, a, um, commandos go after them or capture them or something. There's so many twists in this movie that are unnecessary, but it's, it's an asylum movie. So you're going to see CG dinosaurs and it's not terrible. Although there's certain things you wait for. Like there's an Asian guy in the, the commando group and he, <laughs> and he has a sword. So you're waiting for the time. He's going to use this sword to kill one of these dinosaurs. And then it happens. And then it's pretty mediocre, but Get ready for it, Suzanne. You're probably going to watch <laughs> Triassic Hunt with your husband. You know, because he loves that kind of shit. Oh, God, yes. Mm. Oh, but the pure good of the week, I watched Willy's Wonderland. But you don't, don't, don't know what that is. This is a film in which Nicolas Cage has no dialogue, but he is pitted against mechanical creatures inside of, like, a Chuck E. Cheese type place that are alive by, by some kind of, like, devil cult. And he's, he's forced to kill them in this movie. And it's a magical 90 minutes. <laughs> it is it is wonderful. People are complaining about this movie. And let me tell you, this is a movie that knows just what it is. And it runs with it for 90 fucking minutes. And I'm not even mad at it. It's it's, 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 it's fun. It's easy. It's, it's, want something stupid to turn on? Read the plot synopsis and say, okay, this is the kind of movie we get. And you get that movie. You get it all the way through. And... He's just violent. He doesn't say anything. And uh, Beth Grant, uh, character actress Beth Grant, shows up in there as like the sheriff type lady. Uh, she's in a bunch of stuff. Look her up. You know, you've seen her in something. Um, what else is there? I, I watched. 
watch a lot of wrestling lately because the fun thing about the network is that you could relive certain things like the Attitude Era. So I've been doing that, and I'm not disappointed that the Prime uh, Degeneration X and the Rocks just starting to get big and Stone Cold's already starting to get big. It's just it's just a fun time to watch wrestling, and I, I've been watching it and the current stuff too. And um, man, it's a lot of fun to watch. And um, I'm thinking of something else that I, I may have watched, but um, it's it's escaping me. You know, besides reality TV, because I've I've been rewatching American Restoration. On, on Prime for no reason at all. Just because I like that sort of thing. Counting Cars, I love that show. Forged in Fire, Suzanne Loves, I love it too. Um, this is the good stuff. And then I walk in the room when 90 Day Fiance comes on. Like, what the fucking freak show am I watching now? And you can't look away. Iris knows. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> it is a freak show. And uh, to tell you the truth, though, I'm kind of getting bored with it. <laughs> because it's the yeah. same fucking story over and yeah. over again. If you don't know the majesty of Big Ed, just just YouTube Big Ed ninety day fiance oh, and just get just God. just get creeped out all over again. Oh, <laughs> you know? oh that man. Oh. I have never watched the show and now I'm kind of scared and kind of intrigued at the same time. <laughs> just just YouTube Big Ed. It's fun. <laughs> you, know, you won't be disappointed, you know. It's kind of like my, my cousin who works at a gas station told me about how often the changing table in the bathroom gets broken because people are having sex on it. I, I think it's uh, I think it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those anomalies where you think, you know, the fly, the fly, I, can't, I think I killed Suzanne. <laughs> the flop houses are across the street, but they choose to have sex on the changing table. You know, the, ba- the, the baby changing table inside the men's room. And, you know... Oh my god. Get oh, it in while so you can. Wrong. That's true love right there, see. Oh, that's so wrong. And for some reason they have a blue light in the bathroom. So it's like it's kinda like humor. <laughs> it's it's a blue light special, you know. <laughs> that's what they can call that kind of sexual act, having sex on a changing table in the Thornton's gas station in South Holland, Illinois, the blue light special. Because it's also very special, see. Oh my god. I had to share that with all of you because I got told this and I, my mind is still wow. Humanity, right, people? Come on now, you know. Oh my God, that is. Oh my God. See, that'll take your mind off the current political situation that we're in right now. But you know, I'm not going to talk about that. But sex and the breakage of a baby changing table, just um, <laughs> yeah. Well, that just puts everything into perspective. Definitely sure does. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of uh, boom boom and, and uh, relation, I was going to do a rant here about some some musical issues, but I'm not going to do that now because this is Valentine's Day and um. We're gonna do two films in which two dudes and 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 uh you know the ladies are a little fucked up too um are pretty close to their situation where they they have a chance but they don't really have a chance it's very confusing in my brain as well but we're doing uh Chasing Amy from 1997 and we're doing 500 Days of Summer from 1999 I think it is or 2000 um, we'll figure that out in a minute but um I'm gonna ask Iris first and that that's that's from 2000. Nine. I'm sorry, not 1999. Big mistake there. I'll let Iris pick first. Iris, which one should we do first? Because I'm not going. I'm confused whether to do them in order of the year or or in let's order of, of of Iris anger here. You know, if close out big, you know. Uh, let's do them in in, in uh, order of year. Okay. So, uh, chasing Amy's first 1997. You'll hear about that right after this fun Miramax Weinstein. Oh, God, it's so fucking bubbly. Trailer, right after this. He's got a long face, Horace. I'm just having a little girl trouble. Pressing charges? I get that a lot. Holden McNeil was set in his ways. The way he worked. The way he lived. And the way he thought love should be. But then, she showed up. Let me guess, you like her. This girl loves me. There's something you should know. She got a boyfriend. Well, no. Then what's to know, my friend? And this girl's got a secret that's going to drive him crazy. I like you, Hogan. I'd really like us to be friends. What I tell you, she just needs the right guy. What's up? Once we come pick me up, I'll be your best friend. 
Now, the only thing standing in Holden's way is the truth. I can't take this. Can't take what? I love you. Not in a friendly way. How was your pseudo date? Okay, I'm telling you, she's never even been with a guy. You're dating a guy? So what if it is true? You know you have no shot at getting her into bed. I take it that's not good. Miramax Films presents a comedy that tells it like it feels. Well, she's been around and seen things we've only read about in books. So what'd you do last night? Got lucky. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy from 1997. Your cheapo plot synopsis is this. Holden and Banky are comic, comic book artists. Everything is going good for them until they meet Alyssa, also a comic book artist. Holden falls for her, but his hopes are crushed when he finds out that she's a lesbian. Sort of. Uh, <laughs> this is written and directed by one Kevin Smith, who I'm a fan of, and we'll, we'll get into you know the good, the good, good parts of the movie to me, which are pretty much the first half an hour, you know. <laughs> uh, Cooper X. Oh, I, yeah. I love him so much. Played by Dwight Yule in this movie. Um, you, you got Ben Affleck. You got Jason Lee. A lot, of your, a lot of your Kevin Smith regulars are in this movie. I forget that Matt Damon's in this movie. Um, um, and Jerry Lauren Adams, of course, is, is uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Jones. Um, I don't know. We'll start with this one. So, Suzanne, you first. Uh, what's your, your, your take on... Uh, the one chase of chasing Amy here. Um, was, I know Iris has got a lot to say, so I'm going to keep this really brief because I can't wait to hear what Iris says. But, you know, the first time I saw this movie, I actually kind of liked it. And I watched it maybe four or five years ago. And I'm like, you know, really, I, I started to dislike most of the characters in the movie. And this time around, the only character in the movie I like is Hooper. And you're right about that first 30 minutes with them at the Comic Con interacting with people because i've seen people doing that shit at cons you know so that was that was very accurate and hooper was the best thing in this movie i like this movie is one of those things it's like for me parts of it i enjoyed parts of it basically anything that didn't deal with holden and Alyssa, i mostly could deal with but banksy was such an asshole And I mean, once again, I've known people like that that just can't stand their friends, girlfriends so much that they will just go dig up anything that they can find to put throw a hammer into the situation. But I just I didn't I I don't like Banksy. I Alyssa, I, I can't say that I disliked her or liked her. She was just more of a fixture. She also I mean, I really can't say I disliked her, but. Holden is a fucking asshole. The I hate the the stuff, the relationship stuff between them, and I hated the ending. That whole everybody's happy kind of ending. I just, I really, I can't believe how much my opinion has changed on this movie over three viewings. Did you see the Jay and Silent Bob reboot movie? Yeah. Well, they have a they have a child, and remember him, him and they get together. They have a child. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's that. If you haven't seen that, Iris, I'm sorry to break that to you. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I watched the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and I, once again, I I, I don't want to say I've outgrown Jay and Silent Bob, but it was more, once again, it's bits as opposed to a cohesive story. Oh, it's not good. It's, it's, just, it's just fan service, <laughs> and that's that's all it is. And Yeah, it's straight too. up lip service to, yeah. I, I don't know, I just... I can't believe how much I really, really hated this movie this time around. It was, I, 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 I've come to despise the characters so much that it was, and there are several parts in this movie that are incredibly painful to sit and watch when they're having this whole thing toward the end about, I don't know if they're trying to get back together and Banksy's there and he makes that ridiculously stupid select idea of them, you know, sleeping together. I'm like, Oh my God, everything leading up to that conversation. I was like, I, I was, I was getting up. I, I couldn't, it, it was, it was just, it was uncomfortable. I found most of this movie to be uncomfortable to watch the interactions with people. It just, it's just, you know, straight up uncomfortable. 
I just really, really don't like this movie anymore. I'm just going to leave it there. Suzanne is broken. Uh, Iris, you know, p- p- power lesbian supreme, you know. Oh, what, what, what do you what do you think about this film, girl? I, I know you have I know you have opinions because you had to be on here, and you're always welcome, of course. You know, I'm just saying though. <laughs> she insisted, y'all. So let's let's let's, 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 let's have it now. You know. Okay, so right, the movie as a whole, the acting, uh, the development of the characters, and all that. I have to give it props for that, okay? It's just the subject of the movie in itself. It, it's just, I can't, I know the, I don't know if it's either the feminist in me or it's because I've been put in this situation before. I don't know what it is, but it, it just, it riles me up so bad to the point where I'm like, if, if you're part of the Alphabet Mafia and you watch this movie, you need to get your card taken away, Okay. That's just my opinion. <laughs> but anyway, the, the reasons why is, so you have this guy and you have this girl. It's very obvious and he's been told already, girl likes girls. Guy goes, but I have a dick and everybody wants a dick, right? Okay, so let's go. And it so happens that, okay, so they got together and then now they're in this relationship and uh, and it falls apart when his, and I'm doing little finger quotes, best friend uh tells him that well you know you're not the first guy she's been with so this guy's ego is so fragile that instead of thinking of what kind of relationship he has with this girl he decides well i wasn't the first one so fuck you uh and then he finds out uh, and then he, he, he's trying to get things back together again. And the proposal to get everything back together again is like, well, I know that maybe one dick wasn't enough for you. So how about let's put, let's, let's go with two. Seriously? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? I'm sorry. I cannot stand this movie because of the whole premise of it all. And I think maybe I can relate to her just a little bit because there has been plenty of times as a very young lady in my very early 20s. Where there were guys that were just picking and picking, come on, come on, come on. And I would finally say, fine, just fuck me and get it over with and just leave me alone. And I think that's probably what she was, because he was just on her and on her, like, come on. Oh, my God. It's just, it's so irritating. It is extremely irritating. And even now, I mean, young ladies, when you say no, make sure it's a no. Don't let them talk you into it. And don't get into this place of des- desperation where it was, I got into plenty of time. Like, fine, just take me to bed, get it done, over with. You you good? I'm good. Okay, bye. <laughs> you know, so I, I think maybe that's why it, it just irks me so bad. Because the, the whole thing also is like, they work up, well, she's a lesbian, she's a lesbian, she's a lesbian. Is she really? Maybe she's bi. Why does she have to be a lesbian? But anyway. You know, so uh, I I think maybe that's why the movie just irritates the fuck out of me. Um, It's got some humorous stuff in there. I mean, it is Kevin Smith. Um, There are places where you can't help but laugh. But um, I think, Suzanne, maybe where you're coming from, especially with um, Jay and Silent Bob, is that it's, it's a sophomoric now. I mean, you're over it, right? It's like, yeah, seen it, done that. It's like, you know, grow up. I mean, you know, mall rats, the clerks. It's like this angsty, I don't want to be an adult, <laughs> kids, you know. And yeah. I'm like, okay, what the fuck ever. <laughs> be an adult. I mean, you have no choice. Uh, because I don't want to be an adult. But ta-da, here I am. I don't know. It, it it's, it's those views of this movie where, I know, uh, at least to me, okay, this is my personal opinion, that a guy thinks... That because he has a dick, he can convert a woman. And and it just pisses me off so bad just thinking about it. Because, you know, that's it, it's, uh, it, it's it's a, a very big opinion out there in this world. That, you know, I've gotten it plenty of times. Well, if you had the right dick, you wouldn't be a lesbian. I'm like, uh, no, that's, that's the problem. You have a dick. That's why I'm a lesbian. <laughs> you know? But anyway. So, yeah, that's why I, I cannot stand the movie. But like I was saying, that's just the premise of the movie. The movie in itself, the plot, 
interesting, but, you know, pisses me off. The cast, you can't blame the cast for, for the parts that they're playing because they did play them very well. And, I mean, it got good reception in the box office and everything. And and Kevin Smith, I mean, he knows how to write and direct something that's going to slap you in the face. And to several of us, to many of us, this was pretty much a slap in the face. Not in a good way, but, you know, it, it did catch your attention and it made you question things. Not maybe, you know, if your sexuality, but it made you question of why you acted the way you did in certain situations. So you got to give that movie props for that. But besides that... I cannot stand this movie. And that's pretty much it. You know, besides the comedy, I, I've always thought that Kevin Smith, you know, in, in things like this, it writes the, the human condition pretty well, you know, but like he's like everything I ever said, you know, they, I've known those macho dudes too, that, you know, I've, I've seen a girl that was no, there was no one to be a lesbian. And, you know, I, I could change, I could change that or something, or I can get, her read another girl into bed or something like that. Real macho motherfuckers. But um, <clears throat> my my big problem with this movie is not 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 my big problem. One of my problems with the film is that it kind of goes both ways in this movie, in in my opinion. Because once they got together sexually, she was still kind of glomming on him like she's like she's the girlfriend of his dreams in a way. And I'm not saying she was leading him on, but he was he was falling. He was falling hook hook line and sinker at that point because he he thought that. Like you said, Iris. Oh, she she got the deed. Now now she likes me and nothing else. But you know, once once she goes into her history after you find out about what what you know finger cuffs is and all that shit is, and it basically it's it's none of his business what her history is. You know, they they should like each other for who they are. And this this is this is Holden's problem. Now, Banky, you know, I don't hate him like Suzanne hates him, and, and I'll tell you why. Because he is the only re- he's the only realist of this movie, you know. He, he he says it like it he says it like he thinks it is or thinks it ought to be, but at the same time he's brutally honest. Although I don't think that there, there's just two kinds of lesbians: the butch one and the real pretty one. You know, they're 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 they're, they're individuals. Obviously, it's just that analogy is um is a little warped. But at the same time, it was an analogy to say. He's reaching for the wrong goals here. Maybe he should get over it, you know, because, um, yeah, the whole, the whole time, the whole way, he, even w- before he knew she was a lesbian, he was very arrogant. And of course, he, he he's going to hit that man. And Hooper, who's like the, the, the calming voice, you know, the, 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 the person that try to bring him back to for, from himself in a way, although he's very flamboyant. If you haven't seen the film and you don't know. The, the openings, the, Hooper's opening, I guess you would call it, him coming out, uh, talking about how racist Star Wars is and shit. It, it is one of those great conversations. So is the the Archie and Jughead are lovers conversation. <laughs> him talking to the little black kid at the bookstore about, you know, <laughs> about the revolution and shit. I was like, come on, man. It's it's amazing writing. And that's, that's where you get the Kevin Smith stuff shining in. But at the same time, if you watch this movie... You watch Clerks, and you get the conversation to where um, Randall is talking to Dante about how, how his relationships are so fucked up with the women that he's with, and that it's his fault. That 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 early on, you know, is that early Kevin Smith writing, which is not just about dick and fart jokes and Star Wars and all kinds of other shit. It it is a real human condition shit in there, and I think Banky w- was not the catalyst of their 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 fall, but kind of the guy sitting there was like, hey just nudging his front of his shoulder. Maybe you, you ain't right here. You know, just, and I think that he was right for that reason to say, you know, you're my friend for a long time. And to the point where he's going to leave him because he doesn't, doesn't really want to watch him fall like this. Cause it's, it's fucked up. Y'all their, their relationship is messed up. It, it, it wasn't meant to be. And the fact that the, the, they, they have a child and that reboot, I was like, this is just this, that made it even more dumb that they happen to get together again. It just to, to me it did anyway. I mean, it, it was a nice happy ending. You wrap it up in a nice little bow, but um, I I I just can't I can't do it. Hold McNe- McNeil. I just you, you're not you're not a great person, and um, uh, yeah, mixed up stuff. And I I'm a little mixed up over this movie. I still kind of like it, but I don't I don't like the people the people uh, the characters and with uh, the way the way you go about it. And um, one movie 
I remember watching the nineties. Uh, I think it was Laura Flynn Boyle, Stephen Baldwin, and I think another Baldwin was in a film called Threesome, to where they had Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Well, they had consensual, you know, you know, idea of a threesome. the The end of that movie is, hey, by the way, if you if you like dick, you could have my friend's dick too, you know. But then her speech about which was I, I totally I think it was totally justified because his ego is so big. The basically said that you know what what if you know I get with Bank and I fall in love with him and yada yada yada, which is totally justified because that would fucking bruise his ego even more. So this film should have been this film should have been called Chasing Holden's Ego, not Chasing Amy, because it's just uh it's oh huge. It's you. huge. Thank you. It is so huge and yet so <laughs> fragile. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um. Yeah, that's about my piece of this movie. I, 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 I can still like it. It's it's not my favorite thing he's ever done. And I think that I don't need mall rats too, because they're like old as shit now. I can get like third like twenty late twenty somethings hanging out in the mall. I can't get forty somethings hanging out in the mall. I don't see the point of that. And Clerks Three is the thing that's gonna happen too. And <clears throat> again, if you watch the end of Clerks, it's all wrapped up. They have they they have the business their business of their own, and they they've grown as people. So why would the fuck would you need Clerks Three for? You, you don't you don't need it. You don't need it at all. So <laughs> you just uh, I think Kevin Spacey needs, needs, needs to move on from from doing that kind of thing and maybe focus on something else. Make a horror film. I'll watch that. You know, but um, you did Red State. Well, yeah, you made that. You made that. I mean, like like a slasher type movie would be amazing. I think I think he'd be great right in that. But um, I'll get back to Iris again. Anything else she'd like to say about the movie, and what would she give it one to ten? Um, really not uh, much. And you know, around that time, it seems like there was a lot of movies where, you know, there was that threesome thing. I mean, there was that movie Threesome, not nineteen eighty two Summer Lovers, and you know, it seemed like there was like this theme going on for a while, where you know there was like a couple, and then somebody else is introduced in. You know, something like that. I mean, even the movie Personal Best, I think, was a bit like that, too. And maybe I think that's where, you know, this introduction was starting to come into mainstream media. And uh, people were still not too OK about it, but whatever. But anyway, I'm sorry, I digress. Um, Again, you know, the, the character development, even though you learn to hate, the, or at least for myself, you learn to hate him, was done very well. Um, the plot again, I mean, that was done. And, and like I said, Kevin Smith knows how to write and direct. And I mean, he got a couple of awards for this too. So um, that being said, you know, I, I'm going to have to go with that and not because I just fucking hate the movie. I'm going to have to give it a five. Cool. Suzanne. No, I think you did nail it with it at this age because I saw it when it came out. And I watched it, like I said, four or five years ago, and then I just watched it Thursday. I I, I agree. It's I, I think I just find the subject matter, as you said, sophomoric, which is incredibly true. I just remember growing up and knowing guys like that and knowing the 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 bromances that they would sit there and cut the other guy's girlfriend down, dig up as much dirt make shit up and, you know, having to defend myself over just you know, ridiculous statements. And I think that's what I found this time incredibly, I mean, almost painful is that there, I knew a lot of people like that. And yes, I mean, the writing is incredibly strong. I mean, it, it does, you know, it's, it, it's good enough writing that it does elicit an emotional response. I just, I, 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 I just I just don't enjoy this movie anymore. I it's it, it's I guess for me right now it's it's kind of dated and just a little too uncomfortable in parts, which is usually a good thing. But it's not, you know, it, it's there. I don't. I, I can't even figure out what I'm trying to say. There's like so many if, fucking. If, if you don't mind me jumping in, oh, soon. go ahead, think, please do. I think it's more of. Um, let's see. I was watching this movie in my late 20s early 30s um and i don't know you're probably in your early 20s i think at that time we as people don't have enough uh life experience to actually look at this movie for what it is 
we see it as a romantic, you know, it's a rom-com. Yeah. Um, but the more life experience you have and the more situations similar that you have been in yourself, then it switches this more as a, not a rom-com, but I think more of a social commentary. And I think that's why you and I get uncomfortable because this is a huge social commentary. The commentary yeah. of, you know, one side of the species uh, can control completely the other side of the species because they have a dick. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not doing any man hating or anything. I'm just talking oh, about I'm the listening. premise I, of this I know these movie. Dudes. Hmm? Yeah, I, I knew so many of these dudes. Yeah, exactly. I, I, me too. Like I said, you know, sometimes I was just like, okay, yeah. fine. Just fuck me and leave me alone. Yeah. Uh, are you, you know, done just yet? Just go away. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Now, please leave. <laughs> exactly. You know, just go away. And, and, uh, and, and I see the flip side also for you where you had to defend yourself because there was these guys that were so jealous of, well, you don't spend any time with me anymore. You're always with your fucking girlfriend. Yeah. You know, so then they're trying to make, you know, put a crowbar between you and the guy and, you know, just try to fuck you over. Mm-hmm. And trust me, every guy's had that 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 moment to where you, you, your best buddy, you got a new girl that you felt spent too much time with her, and you you, you didn't hang out enough. So it's true, but you know what? It, we as girls, I, I wouldn't go to the, so. well, I wouldn't you know, go to, to the point of blackmailing it. or anything. <laughs> right, but you know, uh, girls do it too. You know, um, you've got your best, you know, your BFF, and all of a sudden she lives for this guy, and you're like, well, what the fuck, man? I thought we were gonna go hang out. Uh, so, you know, girls do it, too. But I think uh, the way we do it is more emotional. The way guys, you know, try to put that crowbar in there, it's a little bit more hurtful. It's vindictive. It's vindictive yeah, it's and hurtful. Malicious. It's malicious. That's what it is. It's extremely malicious because, you know, it's like one and done. With with women, you know, we're a little bit more patient. We plot. But with a guy, it's like one and done. Boom. And mm-hmm. You know, so um, I think it, it has to do with life experience, to to tell you the truth. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I, I have such mixed feelings on this. But I think it, it, right now, at this point in my life, I'm going to rate it a five. I agree with you 100%. Man, I gotta go a little higher, because if you watch Kevin Smith stuff before this, and now I have a problem with those movies, because as far as they go, I, I still could enjoy them quite a bit. But this is uh, the turning point for him, I think, three he went to a new level of maturity, I think, um, in my opinion. You know, picking the subject matter he did and running with it. And with, I think I think it was his real life girlfriend at the time was Joey Lord yeah, Adams. She was. They were they were, yeah, they were a thing for a while. And I I I I I, I give it a, a respect a lot of respect in, in that sense. I, I'm not I'm not a I'm not a gay guy or I know people who, who are that way. You know, les- lesbians and and, and and gay male gays, of course. That yeah, sounds really insensitive. <laughs> I'm sorry ahead of time, but you know what? I, and a lot of them will watch this movie and say, you know, this is a fucking horseshit. But a lot, a lot of them will watch other stuff too that that are gay and lesbian centric and say that's a bunch of horseshit too. But you know what? It, I think it all depends on the person or whatnot. But the, the, this movie, yeah, you know, the characters the, they're played well, but the but they're but they're written to be to, to be kind of shitty. To where nobody really knows what they want, except for Hooper, because Hooper knows exactly who he is. You know? <laughs> so Hooper is the hero of this movie, and um, I will say that all day long, because he's only got a, good, got a good head on his shoulders and knows precisely who he is. And um, by the way, I've known a lot of comic book artists, and I've never called anybody a tracer ever, because they know how important the job of an inker is. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there, people. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not a tracer, man. And you gotta shade that shit to make it look good. And that's the inker's job. It's just uh, throw, throwing it out there, man. Throwing love to the inkers of the world from the Cinnamon Beef Podcast. <laughs> we appreciate you, you know. <laughs> but yeah, the movie the movie's a seven for me. You know, I I I I, I dig it. I, I'd watch it again, but with a, with a serv- certain caveat of saying, you know what, these people are kind of garbage. But you know what, they're, they're written well, so I I I'll watch it. You know, <laughs> there you go. But um, yeah. With that, that's that's a lot to take in, right, guys? Wait till the next movie, the very vanilla Five Hundred <laughs> Days of Summer. <laughs> You'll hear about that right in the trailer. Oh my gosh, I love a bad. But let me tell you, 
Like, like, yeah. I love the Smiths. Sorry? I said I love the Smiths. You've, you've good taste in music. You like the Smiths? Yeah. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. I love them. Holy. This is a story of boy meets girl. They made a statue of us. The boy, Tom Hansen, grew up believing that he'd never truly be happy until the day he met the one. The girl, Summer Finn, did not share this belief. You should know up front, this is not a love story. I think we should stop seeing each other. Just like that? Just like that. Start from the beginning and tell us what happened. I tried to talk to her in the copy room. She's totally not having Maybe it. Maybe she was just in a hurry. And maybe she's an uppity better than everyone super skank. In college, they called me perfectly adequate and handsome. They used to call me anal girl. I was very neat and organized. See you a boyfriend? No. Who needs it? We're young. Might as well have fun while we can. And... Wait, wait. What happens if you fall in love? You don't believe that, do you? What? It's love, it's not Santa Claus. What I want, you got that might be hard to handle. I think it's official. I'm in love with Summer. I love how she makes me feel. Did you ever even have a boyfriend? Of course. What happened? Why, why didn't they work out? What always happens? Life. get over her. I don't want to get over her. I want to get her back. We've been like Sid and Nancy for months now. We have some disagreements, but I hardly think I'm Sid Vicious. No, I'm Sid. Oh, so I'm Nancy. It's 500 Days of Summer from 2009. Uh, your cheapo plot synopsis is this. An offbeat romantic comedy about a woman who doesn't believe true love exists and the young man who falls for her. Not really what's going on here. Plot synopsis. Who wrote that? The fucking Hallmark Company fucking worked for this fucking movie? Um, the stars, uh, my favorite new girl, Zoe Deschanel. Uh, one of my favorite actors. I think he could do anything. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in this movie as, as Tom, the, the parental douchebag in this movie. Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. I, I think her best role ever as the sister Rachel Clark Gregg plays his boss. There's some other supporting characters in this movie, including uh, his, his douchebag friends, which we're, I'm sure we'll get into. Oh man. She must not want a man. She's kind of bitchy. I'll kick it to Suzanne first. She loves the movie so, so much and ask her. No, what I she thought Iris of. go first. I went first last time. God damn it. Go Iris. <laughs> <laughs> My business stuff woman. Come on now. <laughs> okay. So, um, Zoe Deschanel and Prince did a song that I think would be great for this because it says, don't, don't you want to fall in love tonight? (laughs) And that's basically what this whole movie is. Mm -hmm. This poor guy, it's kind of like a little puppy dog following this girl around and asking her constantly, don't you want to fall in love? Don't you want to fall in love? Where are we in our relationships? His insecurities uh, that he has, I think, um, about this whole real, about just him and her, I think is basically what busted the whole relationship in itself. So, um, I mean, it, it's cute. And I have to say, I love both of these characters, Zoe and, and, and um, Joseph. I, I just love these guys. Okay. Uh, anything that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in, I, I try to watch because he, he's a good actor. He's a good kid. Um, and in this movie, just so interesting. And I love how non it is, you know, like they go over to this day and then he starts thinking about that day and how it all falls apart on him. And, you know, kind of like Cooper was the badass of the other movie. The badass in this movie is Rachel, his little sister, who is the one who is dropping serious words of wisdom on this guy. She knows more than anybody else this entire movie. So and she's like 12 exactly. or something. 
Exactly. He, you know, she's dropping all these words of wisdom on him. And, you know, because he's just, he falls into this deep depression. Well, yeah, you know, he's clueless because he's in this huge, deep depression. Sorry, I had to mute myself. And uh, sometimes I wonder, um, is this movie more about uh, anxiety and mental anguish that uh, of something that we create for ourselves than really about a failed love story? You know, is it really about mental health instead of how a relationship fell apart? And because when you think about it, this kid wrapped himself around this gal in the relationship so much to a point where, I mean, he was broken. He was literally broken. And um, I come from um, a culture and also of a generation where that's the girl's job. She's the one who's supposed to be broken, not the guy. And it just... The first time I watched this movie, I was like, well, it's obviously a movie because, you know, a guy wouldn't do that. But then that was just, you know, my way of thinking. But when I started thinking about it and all, it's like, well, yeah, why why wouldn't he be heartbroken? I mean, he, he was completely and totally invested. And in when he saw that she wasn't, he was heartbroken because he thought, well, why not? Why are you not invested as much as I am? Um, I don't see this movie as a, as a, like the other one, like Chasing Amy, where it's a guy that's just picking and picking and picking and picking until finally she gives in. This is more of a, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I don't know, it, it just seems a little bit more innocent, if maybe that's the word I'm looking for, where this poor kid is just, I mean, he, he's, he's just so into this girl. And then the girl's like, okay, I'm kind of into you. And then she's like, well, you know what? I don't think so. Bye. So, and he's just broken. I mean, he, he goes into this depression and then, oop, Jesus Christ, it's like I'm a first time podcaster. I just hit my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking with my hands, people. I can't help it. I'm in Spanish. I talk with my hands. Um. <laughs> Even if, if you can't if, see me. If, if you grab your dick, you'd be a guinea, see? Well, then there you go. <laughs> Talk with yeah, your hands. But, you know, <laughs> mine's attachable. Okay, so Well, there whatever. you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but no, th- this poor kid is, is he's just so heartbroken that it takes, you know, his friends and his little sister to tell him, hey, look, dude, I mean, there is still life to live. You still need to go out there. Do what you want to do. So he's. And that's exactly what he does. You know, he kind of like pulls himself up by the bootstraps. He's an architect who was working at a dumb in a card company writing little blurbs. So he started putting a portfolio together. You can see him kind of like put himself together again, you know, kind of like build himself up, which is kind of interesting with the analogy of him being an architect. Right. Um, and, but then to me, at the end of the movie, even though it's kind of cute, he is setting himself up again. Again, yes. <laughs> right? It's like, dude, did you not learn? It's, but, it's like yeah. Tales from oh. the Love Dark Side, the end of that fucking movie. Exactly. Exactly. And what's the girl's name? Autumn. Autumn. It's so, it's so picture, <laughs> again, fucking vanilla. It's so fucking picture perfect, you know? <laughs> I mean, so I find it a very cute movie that has kind of just a little bit of like, hey, you know, this is not just about love. It's about mental health and about self-love and self-care. And I do enjoy it. But then again, at the end, you just want to slap the kid and go, what the fuck, dude? You just went through this. <laughs> Have you learned nothing? Exactly. So, yeah, those are my two cents. Suzanne, what's your five cents? I know you got some stuff to say about this movie. You know. Okay, at first, I just have to say that it's losing points for... And this is my own fault. I just don't like Zoe Deschanel. I don't like her. I There's something about her I just don't like. But, I mean, on the other hand, I really like Joseph Gordon-Lovett. He's, I'm, you know, I actually had to stop and think. I really don't think I've ever seen him in anything bad. He's really good. But for me, and you nailed it when you said vanilla. This whole thing is way too vanilla. And they tried to do the... You know, basically the role reversal where the girl is the, for lack of a better term, the bad guy. And he's the one who's just getting heartbroken over everything. 
And yeah, he had the standard asshole friends, but they really weren't. It wasn't to the level of Banksy, but yeah, they were they were more of a non entity. They were they were literally like garland on a Christmas tree. They're there. They're it it looks okay, but it's pretty much just for appearances. And I I think the, the one thing that I, that bothered me throughout the movie is I there's just one personality trait in the movie that really really bothered me. I I I, I don't like that whole aw shucks persona. Maybe it's me. But I, I, I felt bad for, for him throughout the entire movie. I felt so terrible that he was being, I mean, she wasn't doing it overtly or cruelly, but he was just so completely blind to the fact that basically she just wasn't that into him. But he kept trying and trying and trying to find out what, I mean, maybe if she had been pushier, Maybe he would have just given up and moved on to somebody who would actually care about him. I, I, and I like I said, I just straight up still don't like Zoe Deschanel and anything she's ever in except for one movie, and that was Eulogy. Anyway, moving on. I, I found him. I found him to be just two aw shocks, and I just, I, it, it just ran all over me. I don't, I don't really care for that kind of thing in real life. And I can't stand it even more in movies. But I just, I did, it, I did not enjoy this movie at all. I was so happy when it was over. I didn't, I, there was nothing I found funny. When they met up on the train or the bus to go to the wedding, it, I, I did have a little bit of hope that things would go well. But deep down, you know, it wasn't going to. You knew there was going to be some kind of, is some kind of unpleasant surprise for him at the end. I felt bad for Tom. I did. I really did. But damn it, dude. I and you're right about the depression, which they, they didn't really paint it with, you know, broad strokes, but it was it was un, underneath the surface, it was there. And and you're right about Chloe Grace Moretz. She was the best thing in this movie, and it was probably the best thing she had ever done. She was great. She was she was the shining spot in this movie for me. And once again, I just I could not stand. I mean, even though she's supposed to be you know, this happy go lucky woman, I'm sorry. I just kind of she's more manipulative than anything. And I'm probably being incredibly harsh here, but I could not stand her at all all even from the very beginning she it was it was like this perfectly put together facade and i i really i didn't like her tom was great though and i but i I agree with you guys he is a fantastic actor i can't think of anything i've disliked him in but i didn't i just didn't like this very much i didn't clark Gregg was awesome in this too i can't take anything away i just wish i could have seen a little bit more of him but that would have been pointless I, I I just didn't like it. I I it just it did nothing for me. Well, let me tell you why I, I can't feel so bad for Tom because if you watch this movie, right from jump, she tells him that she's looking for a relationship, and that he keeps pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. You know, there, there, there now two things about these these both these films. One thing I mean about both these films that they have in common is that they're, they're excellent companions to each other. The people involved in the, in the you know Alyssa and Holden. And 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 um, Tom and I, I keep wanting to call her Zoe. That's not her name in the movie, though. Tom and Summer in, in the movie are, are are excellent companions. They they have like interests, yada yada yada. But at the same time, she's not looking for somebody. She's a child of divorce, you know. So she believes that love cannot exist. So why should she look for it? But she has this guy again. You know, like you guys say with these puppy dog guys, you know, staring at her all the time, wants to hang out with her and and be whatever. So is she leading him on, really? It, you can't really tell, because the way this movie's filmed, and the way this, it's, the story is told, it jumps from, from point to point, and at certain points of the movie, it's his, what he what he would like his perspective to be, and what actually happened. I mean, a, a great example, that would be when he goes on the blind date with, with the woman, and she's he's remembering things differently, like the way they really happened. Are there, are there any things... That, that I should have done differently or something I did wrong in the way she reacted. Because the way she was reacting was, 
you know, I'm hanging out with you, but you know, you're not my boyfriend kind of look. And I, I can't really blame her in this situation because she, she lays the, the, her cards on the table right away that she's not looking for anything as far as her relationship goes. But the, the whole idea of him wanting and hoping and being infatuated with this woman, he's literally barking up the wrong tree. And so what happens when he gets all broken down about, and he's very selfish in the movie in, in that sense, there's the point where they go home go go to i think her apartment and he he literally yells out loud we're a couple damn it i was like no you're not because she said you guys she she was looking for anything you guys are casual hookup companions if anything you know and the the whole idea where they go where they go to she 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 invites him to a party and he sees a, a ring on her finger and he he assumes he assumed correctly of course you find out later that she is going to get married. She gets married. And even when they have a conversation later, like I I forget how many days later about, you know, them, them also. So it finally happened to you. That fucking selfish asshole just comes out and says, well, you know, it wasn't good for me, I guess. No, motherfucker. Maybe that was what she was looking for at the time. You know, you gotta listen, listen to when people talk to you and say, this is what I don't want. This is literally me telling you, right now to your face that you, and I'm talking my hands right now <laughs> that I don't, that I don't want a relationship. And the, the, the sister, Rachel, Chloe Grace Moretz, she's telling the whole, she's like a therapist throughout this whole thing. And even then he's not listening to her either. So this whole movie is Tom not listening, even to a point where he gets in, in inside of a dance montage in his head, which again, very vanilla, uh, right down to the soundtrack which you know is, is a shining point of this film for me because i enjoyed the tracks and i watched this yes i watched this yesterday and i listened to the the soundtrack at work because I, I love the tracks and, and uh, on the, the soundtrack but the whole idea of, of tom and summer being a thing they were never going to be a thing and that's the that's not even the rub of this movie because she lays it out for him and says you know what i don't want a relationship and then why the fuck are you surprised when you say you want something that I don't want, so let's not be a thing anymore. Is you the point where she she writes him an email and says, uh, are, "Are you ready to just be friends?" He's still not ready. He's still chasing it, and that's the whole movie. Him chasing it and just being bitter about it. And I can't, I can't get behind him for that. Uh, not 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 the actor, but the 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 role he's playing and the character he plays. I can't get behind because, like I said, I've watched everything he's been in. I, I gotta rewatch Don John. Actually, that's a great film he's in. So check that out, guys. But um, ah, yeah, I, I I've known these dudes that are just smitten though, and you want to tell them that, that there's no chance because you see you see the way I, I I'm a good judge. I, I can't say I'm a great judge character, but I, I see the way I'm good at watching reactions to things. And my my bullshit meter that's that's that quarter guinea of me is is on is on point usually when I can smell I can smell it. You know when shit's gonna go bad, it go foul and. You you can see it. You're, you're human beings as well. You can see when people are not compatible. When the girl just looks bored. There's points in this movie where Summer just looks bored. Like is this is he fucking done now? And I think it's played perfectly. And I think you need to watch this again, Suzanne, because there, there, there's there's so many there's so many switches like that to where it's his perspective and her and, and what what well my history my it can obviously you're called de facto and de jure, de facto the way things are, and de jure the way you think things ought to be. It's two way, two, two way different things. And that's Tom's biggest problem with this movie, is that he expected something, and I don't know why he expected something when she, she laid it out so early in their relationship that she wasn't looking for something. So, fuck that guy and his fucking tap dancing ass. And, uh, he's got a lot of them now, though, so there's that. Vanilla! But yeah, <laughs> see that's that's my rant about how dudes act and how dudes should act you know but that's uh that's anybody that's that's the human condition for you but um iris uh anything else and what would you rate a girl um no not, not, not much else on this um i'm gonna give this a, a six and a half you know and, and i think it's because of I, I don't know. It, like I said, it, it, it's just kind of really, you know, where you were at Suzanne with the other movie. It's where I'm at. It's it's kind of like, yeah. I, I just don't know. It's 
I kind of like it, and there's a lot of aspects that I'm just fuck this shit. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a six point five. Fair enough. Uh, Suzanne. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm just going to be like middle of the road. For me, this movie there is just it was it, it, it's it's just vanilla. It's bland. It it. I I mean I I understand the aspect of you know not being straightforward about not wanting a relationship. But still, I mean, I, I I just like I said, I felt for Tom, I felt for his character, and but he wasn't being like he wanted. I, I understand him wanting to know status, you know, just things should have played out a little differently, and that, that let's just say the story could have been a lot more entertaining than it was. But you're right, the soundtrack really kicked ass. So I'm actually giving you an extra point for the soundtrack because I was singing hollow notes for two days. Thank you very much. <laughs> were, you dan- <laughs> were you dancing while you were singing it? You know, of course I was, that was my like cleaning music. Gotcha. But yeah, I've, I'm just going to stick with a five. This was just kind of like, a, it's bland. Gotcha. If you haven't told, I can't tell by my, my, my rant. I'm on team summer on this thing all, all day long because, uh, I'm not rooting for the the way she went about things. Well, not even the way the way she, the way she went about these was, was right because she laid her cards on the table. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I, I like Sasha. Like I said, Joseph Gordon Levitt never turned in a bad performance. I wish he'd do more comedy because Third Rock from the Sun was one of my favorite things and still is. Um, it, yeah, don't put a label on it, Tom. You fucking bastard. Just fucking thinking about shit and not learning shit. This this is like the teen which of love love movies because tom doesn't learn a fucking thing so it's got it's got to learn it lose a fucking point there man just uh although i don't know autumn she could be amazing but you know it's it's it, it is what it is um uh, what, what do i give this 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 is hard because i i do enjoy myself watching this movie it's 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 a seven again i'll give it a seven again um and i think um dudes should check out this movie and just see Maybe you're doing something wrong. I think that's the biggest, biggest uh, ploy of this movie is that Tom thinks he's doing nothing wrong. And I think if men watch this movie, they might learn something from Tom that maybe, you know, they, they shouldn't think of just going there with stars in your eyes and not listen to the conversation that is coming directly at you. And I'm talking with my hands in the microphone right now again. So, you, know, with my hands. you can't see it because it's not a video show, but you know, but uh, hooray, hurrah. Uh, for this vanilla movie, I, I I recommend it. But um, I'm exhausted. That's uh the end of the reviews. We'll be right back to close out the show. Are you sick of the same old stale podcast? Well, then join Vanessa and David as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room, where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on iTunes and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VDClinicPod or email them at vdclinicpod at gmail.com They're ready to cure what ails you. And still, they just might be contagious. Get information or a pamphlet at most pharmacies or a health clinic. If you need help, see a doctor. This is Bo from legionpodcasts.com Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar for those who are directly affected by recent events and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, 
and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, folks, uh, this wraps up. Uh, I, I'm hoping to have this out by by time uh, midday hits on Valentine's Day. Um, U- U.S. time, of course, but um, if not, you might get it the next day. But um, we all hope you had uh, some, some good Valentine's times. Uh, n- no sex on the changing table, we hope, because, you know, that's just... That's just <laughs> raunchy or, or possibly passionate depending on the the you know, the heat of the moment maybe you want to go have sex on the baby changing table you know if you want to if you're feeling frisky man go for it you know i don't i don't judge you know but um unless you're paying for it of course and that's just weird but um <laughs> uh, i'm done uh iris <laughs> what you got coming up girl well, um, I believe if things work out, I will be on a true crime podcast uh, called We Saw the Devil. And we will be discussing the Elisa Lamb, uh, going over autopsy reports and things like that, and just a general discussion. And then, um, see, Sunday, last Sunday, we had uh, Lisa Petrucci, Mike, and Mark, and they did um, Bad Girls Go to Hell. We will be doing uh, Food of the Gods on the 20th. So that should drop on the 21st for BBNBC. And if you want to check out uh, the rest of our stuff, it is at exploitationfilms.com. Cool, cool. Suzanne? Um, but we just finished Wrapped on Trapped Alive. I'm not quite sure. We've really not figured out what our next kind of subset of movies are going to be, but. It should be fun, and if you get the chance, go listen to the Fog remake commentary, where apparently I go temporarily insane. Well, that's understandable, because you love remakes so much. I, I had another uh-huh. idea for a Valentine's show that was going to involve Suzanne, where we did all the Star is Born movies, all, all the remakes and the original, because, you know... But those I, actually, I, that, it is, that is a story that can be retold in different time frames. I heard a version of Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks do a version of that song from from the new one, the the shallow song. And you would hope Garth Brooks is hanging himself in the, in the garage, like like Bradley Cooper did in that movie, because that man's got a thick neck now. Because Trisha Trisha Yearwood feeds him really well. He needed a big rope to hang himself in the garage. <laughs> in, in retrospect, he's a great performer, and so is his wife. Okay, you know. But it just sounds too, it sounds too vanilla when they sing it. You know, it sounds a little more soulful when Gaga and, and Bradley Cooper are singing it. You know, it's like, what is this, man? That was my rant, too, about, about country music now. You know, <laughs> I I think, like, like man, I feel like a woman by Shania Twain is the reason why we have Taylor Swift now. It just hurts my feelings, you know. <laughs> there was a churning point there to where I said, you know what? I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> Shania. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, she's good looking. But you know yeah, what? I, I I I I can I can call that the turning point to where country music turned to this pop garbage that I can't stand anymore. But, but you want to know who who my true country crush was? Was it Reba? Well, of course she's the redhead. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, Crystal Gale with the long hair. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God, mm. I remember. I don't mind some of the stuff from you know the seventies and the eighties because it was what it was. Yeah. You know. I, I, Children, yeah, I go got, look her up. Oh, yeah. My parents have had tons and tons of Crystal Gale records. Okay. Seriously, people, this was back when this was like just as cassettes were coming out and people were realizing that eight tracks just were not going to be the wave of the future. Actual records from Columbia House. Yes. Penny a piece. And, still then, and then all the words, all the lyrics inside your tape. Yes. I miss albums because I I love big artwork. Yeah, and I love I still will get I, I'll still listen to the Urban Cowboy soundtrack and anything off any of the any which way you can and every which way that loose movies. That you is just, the kind of country you that just, I you can just get love into. Ronnie Bill. 
You love Ronnie Millsap all that much more, don't you? Just throwing it out no, there. No, it's a chubby, a chubby <laughs> checker doing Blueberry Hill. Or no, sorry, Fats Domino doing Blueberry Hill. That is <laughs> one of the coolest things ever. Oh, boy. Yeah, we ended on that. Sorry, country music. You're, you're dead to me. Fucking go burn a lake of fire with Luke Bryan and fucking Rascal Flats. Okay, just, just do it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, well, never mind. I, I'll go for a half an hour on this. I don't want to. But uh, thanks for listening. Respect your the no no parts of your 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 chosen lover, you know, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we love you, of course. And this has been your Sin Beef podcast, where if you've got beef, we've got the grinder. Bye bye now. Bye. Uh, I always wait for the buys. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye.